All right, are you ready to have your mind blown? If you're not, please hit pause, prepare yourself, because you are about to have your mind blown. I'm going to show you a trick for finding dy dx in situations where we're doing implicit differentiation, where x's and y's are mixed together. The way we could find dy dx is we do curly d dx over curly d dy. This right here is, is a, a curly d. It's not a Greek symbol or anything. It's just kind of a d that gets... You left that in the sun, it dried up, it kind of curled up. Um, the idea behind these, let's say we're doing curly d dy. This is partial derivative with respect to y. What partial derivative means is we're going to take the derivative of everything. In this case, we're going to do derivative with respect to y, or partial derivative with respect to y. That means I do the derivative of everything, and I pretend like anything besides y is just a constant. When I see x, I pretend like it's just some constant. So in this case, derivative of y squared will be 2y, and I don't do any of this times y prime chain rule business. It's, it's, a, it's like a, what you hope derivatives work as. Derivative of y squared will be 2y. Derivative of x plus y, I pretend like x is just some constant because I'm doing partial derivatives, so I don't have to do product rule. x, in the view of partial derivatives, x is a constant, so derivative of xy is just going to be x. Derivative of 5y is 5, you know, with respect to y, derivative of 5y is 5, 10y would be 10, xy would be x. And derivative of x squared, x is a constant, so the derivative of that is 0. It doesn't matter if it's squared. Derivative of 5 squared is still 0, because it's derivative of 25. So, let's give it a try. Also, note that if you ever are confused on which goes on top of the x or the y, if you took this and you did kind of keep change flip, you would have this times this, which then would make something with y over x, which is what we want. So let's give it a try. If I want to find the derivative of this, my first step is I have to move everything to one side. So I would have x squared y cubed minus cosine of x plus y minus x cubed equals zero. I'm just doing the colors here that way you can see where different parts of my problem come from. So I move everything to one side and then I say that, let's, what color do we want to do? Let's do light blue. dy dx, our normal dy dx, we're going to find with negative partial derivative with respect to x over partial derivative with respect to y. So I'm going to take this whole thing on the left side, the whole expression, and I'm going to do the partial derivative with respect to x. x squared y cubed, I'm pretending like y cubed is a constant, so it's almost like x squared times 10, or 10x squared. The derivative of 10x squared would be 10 times 2x. The derivative of x squared times y cubed is going to be 2x times that y cubed. The y cubed is just some constant being multiplied, so it comes along for the ride. Partial derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. Then I have minus. Derivative of cosine of x plus y will be negative sine, so it will become plus sine of x plus y times derivative of the inside. Partial derivative of the inside, remember. So with respect to x, the partial derivative is going to be 1 plus 0. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of y, with, you know, partial derivatives, is going to be 0. And then I'll have minus partial derivative with respect to x of x cubed is 3x squared, just like derivative would be. Over. With respect to y, oops, with respect to y, the partial derivative of x squared y cubed is going to be 3x squared y squared. Derivative of negative cosine x plus y will be positive sine x plus y times 0 plus 1. I don't need to write the 0, I'm just kind of showing every step. And derivative of x cubed goes away. It's gone entirely because I'm, I'm pretending like x is a constant when I do partial derivatives. There we go. That's my, that's my answer. I mean, if I want to clean it up, I could write this as negative 2xy cubed plus sine x plus y minus 3x squared. 3x, you know, I don't need to write the zeros in other case. In other words, that one felt like a bit much, but the next one I think is a little bit 
easier to wrap our heads around. But note that, I mean, this would have been a lot. If I had done this our normal way, I would have had some product rule here. I would have had some fun chain rule here. This this did still save me time. This one is it's going to be no problem. If I did this one, first I'd move everything to one side. So x squared plus 4y. doesn't matter if I move it to the left or right. Either way, it'll come out the same. dy dx equals negative. The negative is the easiest part to mess up. People will forget that. Partial derivative with respect to x or partial derivative with respect to y. With respect to x, x squared becomes 2x. 4y is a constant, so it goes away. Negative 2y cubed is a constant, so it goes away. Minus 2 is a constant, so it goes away. With respect to y, I have x squared will be a constant, so it will go away. 4y becomes 4, minus 6y squared, and then minus 2 is a constant, so it goes away. There's dy dx. How quickly did I do that? Oh my goodness, fantastic. Why did we not learn this trick earlier? It's because I wanted you to know the, the more legit way to do it. That way we could do uh, related rates. But now that we know related rates, we're masters of related rates. This is a fine option. This one, I could say, everything's already on one side, so I could go straight to dy dx equals negative. Partial with respect to x, or partial with respect to y. So negative. With respect to x, the top, the y is a constant in x squared y, so it's just going to be 2x times that constant. Minus cosine becomes plus sine of 3x. And the 2's in front plus a 3 from chain rule means I'm going to have a 6. The minus 3 uh, is a constant, so it goes away. On bottom, I pretend like y is, uh, the x is a constant. So derivative of x squared y, derivative of constant times y is just going to be that constant. So x squared. Everything else is a constant, so it'll all go away. I'm left, left with dy dx equals, I, how it is written is fine, or if I want I could do negative 2y over x plus 6 sine of 3x over x squared. I don't know why I would write it that way, but just, just showing you options. How quickly, oh, the great thing about these is that you don't need to show work, it's just instant. This one, oh, this would be such a pain if I were doing this the long way, but if I move everything to one side, get dy dx equals negative curly d dx curly d dy negative with respect to x cosine is going to become negative sine of xy times derivative of the inside whereas the normal way we've been doing implicit differentiation derivative of the inside I would have to do chain rule now I don't because with respect to partial derivative with respect to x, y is going to be a constant, so derivative of x times a constant is just x. I mean, it's just the constant, it's just y. And then derivative of x e to the y, e to the y is a constant, so I'll just have plus e to the y. Minus x squared y cubed, the y cubed is a constant, so it's minus 2x y cubed. In the denominator, I have negative sine of xy times derivative of the inside, partial derivative with respect to y of the inside. The x is a constant, so constant times y will become constant. Plus, now the x is a constant, and x e to the y, the x is a constant. So derivative of 5 e to the y would be 5 e to the y. So x e to the y will be x e to the y. Uh, minus 3 x squared, y squared. Nice. And I could distribute the negative to cancel some negatives somewhere or something. We'll do a couple more. We still have some time. Oh, this one I could... Let's just use as quickly as possible. The 7, I don't need to rewrite it with the 7 on the other side. It's a constant. It'll go away. You know, if I wrote... I'll be, I will write it. If I wrote minus 7 equals 0, no matter when I do... With the partial derivative with respect to x or with respect to y, either way, the minus 7 is going to go away. So I could have just kept it on the other side. Uh, 
partial derivative with respect to x would be 2x minus y. Partial derivative with respect to y, x squared will go away, and I'll have minus x plus 2y. So quick. I'll move everything to one side. And then dy dx equals partial derivative with respect to x, I would get just 1 over x. The cosine of 1 over y, that's going to be a constant in the eyes of the partial derivative, so that doesn't matter. And then derivative, uh, partial derivative with respect to y, the ln x is a constant, so that goes away. Derivative of minus cosine is positive sine of 1 over y times derivative of the inside, so times derivative of y to the negative 1 will be negative y to the negative 2. And if I want to do some simplifying, a negative here could cancel with a negative here. The 1 over x in the numerator means I'm going to have an x in the denominator. The y to the negative 2 in the denominator means I'll have a y squared in the numerator. That's my dy dx. This is a lovely trick. You can always use it to check your answer. Just in case at this point you're so like, oh, this is beautiful. How did I ever do it before? I'll redo do this one, but I'll do it with the, uh, the way we would normally do it prior to this video. How I would do it prior to this video is I would have done derivative, not curly, just straight up derivative with respect to x of the whole thing. Derivative of ln of x would be 1 over x. Derivative of cosine of 1 over y would be negative sine 1 over y times derivative of the inside, so times negative y to the negative 2 times dy dx. And then I would have divided everything and solved for dy dx. This one, it feels like the same. Let's do a different one. This one, if I were doing finding dy dx the normal way, I would have done derivative with respect to x of everything, and derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of xy is going to be some product rule, plus derivative of y squared is going to be 2y times dy dx, derivative of 7 is 0. So that product rule that I skipped over, derivative of xy, one time I'll have x, the other time I'll have 1. When I have just x, it means I did derivative of y. When I have 1, it means I did derivative of x, I don't have to do derivative of y. So then I want to put everything with dy dx on one side, everything without on the other. First I'm just distributing. Then I'll put everything without dy dx. I'm going to put on the left side. On this side I'll put with the dy dx. I can factor out a dy dx and divide by the thing that's not dy dx and I get 2x minus y over x minus 2y equals dy dx. Let's see how that compares to what I had before. 2x minus y over x minus 2y. If I distribute this negative to this whole thing, I get 2x minus y over negative negative x plus 2y equals 2x minus y over x minus 2y, which is what I had down here. So I still got the same answer. You could do it either way. You do you. All right. Oh my goodness, this video is 15 minutes. Better end it. Hope this was interesting. Maybe helpful.